Welcome to this introductory video on digestion. Today we're going to keep things simple and use this interactive website to explore the passage of different foods through the digestive system or digestive tract. Digestion is the process by which food and drink are broken down into their basic chemical structures in the gastrointestinal tract. So for example, starch and carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars and glucose, fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol, and proteins are broken down into their amino acids. The purpose for this is so that the body can absorb these nutrients into the bloodstream to build and nourish cells and to provide energy. The gastrointestinal tract is a series of hollow organs connecting from the mouth at the start of the digestive process all the way through to the rectum and the anus at the end of the digestive process. We're going to take a look in detail at six of the major points along this pathway today, starting with the mouth. Digestion starts in the mouth, where the teeth and the muscles of the mouth break food into ever smaller and smaller pieces to increase their surface area to enable digestion from enzymes later on in the digestive process. It is mixed with food in the mouth to moisten individual food particles and allow for easier swallowing. Saliva also contains the enzyme salivary amylase, which works on the starch molecules to break them down into smaller sugars, which will be further digested later in the digestive system. Once food is ready for swallowing, it passes down through the esophagus into the stomach, which is the next stop along our journey. The stomach is essentially a large muscular sac, which can hold a volume of up to one liter of food and liquid and can store this for up to three and a half hours. In the stomach, food is mixed with gastric juices and hydrochloric acid, becoming a fluid substance known as chyme. Carbohydrates are not changed in the stomach. However, proteins get broken down into smaller pieces by enzymes contained in the gastric juices and fats or lipids are broken down slightly by the acidic environment. Like the mouth, the stomach plays a key role in mechanical digestion and a process known as churning involves the muscles of the stomach wall moving food particles around to mix them thoroughly with the gastric juices and to break them again into smaller pieces. When it is time for food to move into the intestinal system, the stomach slowly empties its food into the duodenum, the next step along our journey. As you can see, the duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. Here, bile is added from the liver in order to break down large fat globules into tiny fat droplets, which are then able to be digested by enzymes specifically added to break down fat. Other enzymes are added at this point, which work on proteins and carbohydrates. We'll learn more about these in more detail in another video. Next, food moves into the ileum, the second part of the small intestine, where sugars, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals are all processed into particles which are small enough to be absorbed through the walls of the ileum and into the bloodstream. The ileum is covered with tiny finger-like projections known as villi, which cover the inside surface and increase the surface area through which the nutrients are able to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Once all of the nutrients are absorbed, what's left over is a liquid of undigestible material, often fibre, and some water. Next, food moves into the colon or the large intestine. This is where the liquid waste of undigested food and water passes through, and most of the water is reabsorbed into the bloodstream and passed onto the kidneys to be excreted as urine. The semi-solid waste collects in the colon and is passed onto the rectum for expulsion within one to two days. And the final stop on our journey is, of course, the anus. This is where food waste that was stored in the rectum is expelled through the anus. And that is the last stop on our journey of the digestive system. Now, let's choose one of these foods to observe its passage through the digestive system. We have baked beans, ice cream, grilled fish, sweets, or the humble apple. I'm going to choose the baked beans as they contain starch, a form of carbohydrate, protein, 
and fat, so our three macronutrients, as well as vitamins, minerals, and roughage, which we commonly refer to as fiber. Let's have a look at the process of baked beans being chewed in the mouth. As mentioned earlier, saliva is uh, produced in the salivary glands adjacent to the mouth and added to the food. This contains the enzyme salivary amylase, dancing here, which helps to break down starch particles in the baked beans into smaller sugar molecules. Have a look. So you can see from one starch molecule, we now have multiple smaller sugar molecules. The mucus in the saliva helps the broken down mush or the, bacon <laughs> the baked beans go down into the esophagus and then into the stomach. Okay, so let's have a look at the process of digestion in the stomach. First of all, the stomach's digestive juices or gastric juices are mixed with the food. We have enzymes that can work on protein molecules to start to break them down. Again, note that the large protein molecules have been broken down into smaller peptide chains. More about this later. You can see a small muscular hole at the bottom of the stomach. This needs to relax to allow the contents of the stomach into the duodenum a little at a time to allow for proper digestion. Once in the duodenum, you can see that we have more enzymes here ready, the starch enzyme in this case, and protein enzyme ready to break down remaining protein particles and starch into sugar particles. Over here we have a large globule of fat. Biomolecules come along to first of all emulsify the fat to make it more soluble in water and this allows the large fat globule to be broken down into smaller pieces of fat. Then we have enzymes that work specifically with fat molecules that break down the fat particles into fatty acids and glycerol. Once this process of digestion has happened, we move into the ileum, the small intestine. You can see the finger-like projections I was talking about here, known as villi. And you can also see that we now have individual sugar particles, fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, all ready to be absorbed through the walls of the ileum and into the bloodstream. It looks like a feeding frenzy. As mentioned earlier, what's left behind is the undigested waste, which is largely fiber and some water molecules. This passes into the colon or the large intestine. Most of the water is reabsorbed into the bloodstream or to be excreted as urine. As you can see, water molecules passing off through the walls of the colon. And the remainder of the waste passes into the rectum and then the anus in order to be expelled from the body as a feces. So the fun part. What remains is stored in the rectum and expelled through the anus. <laughs> Told you it was fun.